five, Panorama City, California, 91412. Randy Travis, he's the best. Still the real thing. We got a couple of the photos that we didn't get a chance to see. Oh, Take yeah? A look. Oh, what do we get mm -hmm. here? Ooh, ah, look at that. Glory, oh, alluring nice. punk. Lovely. All right. That's, that's yeah. Is that's that enough? Oh, terrific. we'll stop that's there. Thank you. Cut. Thank, thank you, Gloria <laughs> Sue. Thank Dude, you. And don't you. forget, they, they the sun come you. play. Coming up, Laura Cindy <laughs> Williams, great. home on the beach at Malibu. I didn't expect that. that When it comes to convenience foods, most people think that this one's pretty good. But then everything could stand a little improvement. For example, what if you subtracted a few of the calories? Or what if you made it, say, uh, three times as fast? You'd have top shelf from Hormel. The unfrozen entree you can feel good about. Top shelf from Hormel. A good thing? feel good about. Top Shelf from Hormel. A good thing? I'm a college up. I'm sorry. Okay, so we were fooling around and we weren't ready. Would you kindly welcome the Mayflower Madam, Sydney Biddle Barrows? Look at that hand. You applaud a madam like this? I'm telling you, what's the world coming to? Here, here she is. You remember her? This is the woman who got busted by the vice squad in New York City. She did not go to the slammer. You paid a fine. Yes. And your uh, girls, as you call them, made between $175 and $195 an hour. That's right. And uh, they were obliged, among other things, to be uh, educated, able to talk. You didn't have gum-chewing, uh, you know, bimbos. Uh, you, you expected them to be women of culture and you expected them to be dressed in a way that the man who uh, engaged their services for the evening could take them to any, could take them anywhere except home. <laughs> could take them to any restaurant and if his boss or the board of directors walked in, there would be no, yes, I'd like you to meet you. And she would be, you know, white gloves, the whole business. And she had to wear a garter belt. <laughs> And every woman in this audience knows why. That, that was something you learned early on, was it? Yes, Ms. absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and you also suggested that was something that they seldom saw at home. Very rarely. Very rarely. Really? Make a note. Uh-huh. Uh, and you are a graduate of a, uh, like a preppy school in Connecticut. Yes, Stonely Burnham. And you are a direct descendant of those who came here on the Mayflower. That's right. And your grandmother was not at all amused at your profession. No, I'm afraid she was not. You used to be in retailing. You sold belts and scarves and so on. Yes. <clears throat> and you were doing very well at that. And then suddenly something, you were asked to take payoffs or to behave right. illegally and you quit that. Mm -hmm. And you discovered, lo and behold, there was a need out there for a very classy upscale Escort, Escort service, service. <laughs> uh -huh. which you called cachet, and your girls took uh, a plastic but not American Express. That's right. You could leave home without it. <laughs> and business was wonderful. Wonderful. How many books did you have of people? We had seven books, none, only one of which was black, depending on the part of the alphabet the client was in. We had orange and red and green and blue, and mm -hmm. every client had a little card. Uh-huh. 
And you weren't, and, uh, and the Jews were better than the Arabs. Anybody was better than the Arabs, yes. The, the Arabs, Arabs, what, didn't talk and... Uh... They, ju they just weren't nice to the girls. They really were not. Uh -huh. And the girls didn't enjoy being with them. Uh -huh. They would order them like pizzas. <laughs> they sort would. Of. Yeah, they'd have some eight come over and they would only need four or five. And they'd, they would all sit on one side of the room. And the girls would sit on the other side of the room. And they'd all chit-chat to each other in Arabic, deciding which ones they wanted. And then they would just dismiss the other ones. That's a that cultural thing, uh, that sexism lives apparently more profoundly in some cultures than other. Obviously, you had no Irish Catholic clients. Oh, no, we even had a priest. Uh, and uh, the basic complaint, don't tell them, the basic complaint that the women had about the men that they saw was what? What was the most oft-heard complaint? <laughs> it's a daytime show now. <laughs> They were dirty? No. They, what? They were old fuddy duddies? No. Their wife didn't understand them. No. They were, they were boring. The, the, the clients were boring, not the girls. That's what I meant. Oh, the to... girls had to watch 60 Minutes. They had to read Newsweek or Time every week. They had to watch the nightly news. They really had to know what was going on. Your girls. Absolutely. And then they'd go out and the guy was a... Uh, Dud. Silence Sphinx. Well, see, what you have to remember is the longer the young lady stayed with the client, the more money she made. So if she could just keep on talking and talking, which means she needs a lot to talk about, then she gets paid for more and more hours. So it's in her best interests to have a lot to say. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't look like a madam, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> uh, you know what? I mean, is this the third grade teacher at the... <laughs> uh, now, uh, did, were you ever married? No. Uh huh. D did you? How did you? How did you deal with this? Uh, the humiliation in your own family. I mean, do you know what I mean? I'm just impressed that you were so not. I wasn't as humiliated as they were. <laughs> well, that's Especially right, and that's parents, why I'm wondering you know? how you did this. Uh, how come you didn't worry about what mother would think? Well, you have to, I'm, I'm a very precise sort of person, and I looked at the whole thing statistically, and I realized that statistically, my chances of getting caught were so remote that I shouldn't even worry about it. Now, yes. obviously, somebody has to make that very remote statistic, and I ended up being that person. And you wound up in That's every that. newspaper in New York. Every, and the world, I think. Yes, pictures, you know, Mayflower Madam. Yeah. Uh, but even that didn't seem to crush you. You... I'm impressed with how you uh, were so counterculture. You, you know, this is every mother's nightmare. It is. <laughs> uh huh. But it didn't bother you. I wouldn't say it didn't bother me. I think that I realized it, I was in a situation. I have a friend who who said to me, you know, Sydney, if you've got lemons, make lemonade. And I had a whole basket full of lemons. And what was I going to do with them? Let them sit there and rot, or make something good out of them? Uh huh. Um. <laughs> And you, uh, we ass is there a man in your life? Yeah. Well, that's encouraging. <laughs> um, and your own, your own uh, uh, personal history, uh, whether I assume that you were just the normal girl who went out and uh, sometimes, I mean, were you, uh, did you have early sexual experiences? Did you wait a long time? I mean, how Connecticut were you? <laughs> I was pretty Connecticut. I always had a boyfriend. I was never, even though I grew up in the 60s, uh, I was never promiscuous. I never believed in, I never had a one-night stand. It wasn't until I came to New York and I thought to myself, you know, I've never had a one-night stand. I wonder what it would be like. So I went and I, <laughs> it's true. I decided I would just try it because, you know, how could I knock it if I hadn't tried it? So I went and I found this very preppy, waspy guy who worked for American Express and I let him lure me back to see his etchings. And it was really just as gross as I thought it would be. Really? Yeah. No good. Yeah, it was no good. Wham, bam, thank you. So man. I said, I don't need to do this again. I know what it's like now. Mm -hmm. Uh, so now, uh, so from that moment on, then, uh, sex became very special to you and only uh, uh, intimacy was something that you only, that you very carefully evolved into rather than... Right, but that, what was, that is what was right for me. I know that's not what's right for everybody, and I'm not one of these people who believes that because I think something's right or true for me, that it should be right and true for everybody else. That's just what was right for me. Uh-huh. And you'd like to see, obviously, you're a very liberal type. Uh, you want to see prostitution legalized, and you probably hate it when you see these women on the streets with their 
I, I would like to see it decriminalized because what happens is people take unfair advantage of these young girls and it's you know not everybody can do it in as fun and safe and glamorous a way as I was able to do it and you've got a lot of kids out there who are truly being victimized by some pretty dreadful people because they have no one to turn to mm -hmm. you know they can't go to their local police station or better business bureau and say hey this, this you know this guy isn't treating me fairly he's making me work 12-hour shifts he's making me wear mini skirts out in 20 degree weather you know he takes all my money uh, they would laugh at her so mm -hmm. these poor kids are left with no one to turn to and that's why they're so victimized mm -hmm. if they legalized it then these girls would have a choice of who they wanted to work for and obviously they wouldn't work for people who took advantage right. of them. now is it still illegal here in New York it sure is you can give it away but you can't sell it well I don't understand <laughs> but but the phone book every phone book in every major city in America even yellow Peoria. page even Peoria? even Peoria well there goes Peoria well <laughs> That's the canary that just died in the mine. We're finished if Fiore is gone. Here's the point. Uh, how come we've got pages and pages in the yellow pages uh, uh, advertising escort services if they're illegal? I don't know. Well, see, what you have to understand is escort, escort services are not technically illegal. You see, prostitution, which is illegal, is the exchange of a specific amount of money for a specific sexual act. Sexual act A will cost you 50, sexual act B will cost you $100. With an escort service, the client pays for the young lady's time. He pays the exact same amount of money per hour, whether he does or doesn't do anything. Now, I'm not saying that isn't breaking the spirit of the law, but it's not technically breaking the law. And well, that's why, why, why couldn't you get around that, then? You I weren't did. technically breaking the law. I, did, I didn't go to jail. But you paid a fine. Yeah, but for, you know, it was a pretty small fine just to get out of a big mess. How much was it? $5,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't so bad. Well, uh, and, and a lot of your business was uh, financial types. Oh, yes, absolutely. Wall Street, huh? Wall Street. A lot of investment bankers, venture capitalists, people who really don't have that, and they were mostly single, people who just don't have the kind of time to devote to a relationship. But all of a sudden, they realized they were lonely, and who are they going to call? Right. Now, there must be a significant number of businesses in... What are you laughing at? <laughs> there must be a significant number of businesses in New York City, our nation's busiest, most populous, and arguably most powerful city doing right now what you did absolutely there are businesses that were in business before i came into business who were still there i still see their ads so you you really you just chuckle at this hypocrisy then do you yeah and you're suggesting among other things let's stop this pretense that's ridiculous because as i said if you can give it away why can't you sell it this is a capitalistic country mm -hmm. i mean if you can give it away as many times as you want but all of a sudden you can get arrested for selling it once it's and if it was totally open, if it was totally open, uh, the uh, competition would work, and we would have, we would have uh, r reputations developed uh, within some businesses like yours. That's v very special, and w one man tells another. I guess, huh? Sure. And everyone would make money. All the advertising agencies, all the government with the taxes. I mean, right. think of the possibilities. And you auditioned all your girls. You, you, you sat down and interviewed them, told them who they were, uh, found out who they were, et cetera, huh? Oh, yeah. I didn't actually audition them. I left that for the clients to do, but I did. Uh, well, you know what I mean. Uh, you, 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 you interviewed them as an employer would. Absolutely, sure. This was a real job, and that's the way we treated it. We even had a little mini training program, everything you ever wanted to know about being a call girl. Really? And what would be some of the features of the training program? Well, we told them, you know, well, what the client expected, what they could expect, what they should or shouldn't do, could or couldn't do. Uh, a lot of girls just needed basic teaching of manners, to be honest with you. They, didn't, they weren't quite sure how to fold, hold a knife and fork properly. Really? And, uh... And uh, you told them to dress like as though they were taking their grandfather to 21. Yes. For lunch. For lunch. But we needed that. First of all, grandfather. Now, uh, do you dress that way when you first meet your, your client? Is that what you meant? Or when they came to visit you? Well, when they came to visit me. But, well, that's the way they should dress when they go to see a client as well. But I had them come dressed that way. But you would be amazed at what people think they need to wear to get a job like this. I mean, they think they ought to wear something cut down to here and up to here. And, you know, it You're was... saying, no, no, you got no, it all wrong. No, they got it all wrong. I mean, half those girls wouldn't have gotten into 21 on a slow day. Really? <laughs> no. So that, uh, so that your girls did not come on... Like no, that. absolutely not. Uh, I told them, if you don't look like you are either the wife or the daughter of the richest man in the Pierre, you don't belong working for me. Mm -hmm. The Pierre is a hotel. Well, <clears throat> right. And uh, I assume a hotel to which many of your women would go for absolutely, an evening of work. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sydney Biddle Barrows is back with a book titled Mayflower Manners. You, and it's nice and small. You fit in your purse. Now, these... <laughs> This is, uh, this is important. Look, you know, if you don't watch our show, you're just going to be left 
in the dust. <laughs> Etiquette for consenting adults. Are you ready? Do you have your pads and paper? <laughs> and pencil? Here we go. Uh, show them uh, basic etiquette for arranged sex. If you're watching this, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Number one, decide exactly what sort of escorting you want. Let's come back to you and tell, what does that mean? Well, do you simply want a quick roll in the hay or do you want someone to go out to dinner with? Uh, what, you know, what sort of thing do you really want? Two, after calling when inquiring as to which young ladies are available for that evening, don't ask crudely. Okay. This, is, this is advice to the men, obviously. Well, well, sometimes we get phone calls and they go, oh, what do you got tonight? You know, and the answer was a <laughs> dial tone. But if he would say, hi, I'm Mr. Smith. I'm staying in the plaza in room 123. I saw your ad in the yellow pages. Would you tell me a little bit about the agency? That was obviously a different sort of gentleman. The guy used grammar and you could tell, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, hey, baby, yeah. you hung up. <laughs> I mean, we're classy, too, you know. <laughs> Number three, tell the agency what you want, but there is no need to be vulgar. I get that. Next is interesting. Never mention sex. Oh, absolutely not. You see, the person on the other end of the line could be a police officer. And in New York, listen, this is the best of all, well, in New York... How can you tell the agency what you want if you've never mentioned... Well, because when you hear the price, you see, agreeing to commit a sexual act for money is just the same as doing it. All you have to do is say, yes, I will give you a blank for $200, and they can arrest you. You don't even ever have to touch or see the thing. Yeah. You just have to agree to do it. Yeah. And they'll arrest you. <laughs> yes, they will. That's a little like Catholic moral theology. You can commit a sin just thinking about it. That's right. So that's why over the phone, we, we, you can't ever talk about sex, because if we agree to send you a young lady to perform a sexual act for money, then we could all be arrested before anyone's even left their house. Number five, after uh, reaching an agreement with the agency, you will hang up. Soon the young lady will call you. Uh-huh, that's pretty good. Are you there, caller? Yes, I am. Sydney, I think you're wonderful. I think the escort service should be legalized. They, they should not legalize drugs. They should legalize prostitution. They should legalize, and I think you have a very good escort service. I wouldn't consider you in the prostitution field. I think you really held everything above board, and yeah. I honestly and truly do believe you. I really think you, you tried your best. And how'd you get so liberal? I don't know. I'm an old Catholic girl who just... Uh, Grew into it, I guess. Yeah, you're a, you're a married person? Yes, I am, sir. I am. One time. One time. Love your husband, always will. Very much. You're my two children. Right. And, and I also had told the operator that I said I'd like to apply for a job. <laughs> You, uh, wait a minute. How long have you been married? Uh, tw 14 years. Yeah. You wouldn't consider this as part-time work. Honestly, no. But I did a very long time ago. I really never thought, thought there was anything really wrong with it if it was run properly. If the girls were checked, if, yeah. if the men were checked out, and, and they didn't have to do... I mean, if they had someone to go back to and say, look, I don't want to do what this guy wants me to do, well, if she... someone backed him up, yeah. I thought that was great. Not like it's a, you know, she's not a pimp, she's... Right. Well, the, incidentally, the issue about which you speak, I don't want to, you know, he wants X and I want Y, and I, it, it's all in here. You'll be pleased to know. I mean, it's very well covered, <laughs> some of which I'll be happy to share with you in just a moment. Let me just continue this. Uh, number six, are we on? Your escort will come to you, whether you intend her to escort you on a night on the town or to a chair across the room. In other words, uh-huh. That's pretty simple, huh? Seven, most services ask for payment up front, after receipt of which many employees are required to phone their offices and report in. And we didn't do that. You didn't most do that. Most places do you actually, that. You actually encouraged your, uh, your, that your uh, girls, ladies. Were, <laughs> young ladies, were obliged to request the payment for services after Afterwards. the event. Very unusual. It is, but you know, isn't it awfully tacky to walk in? Hi, my name is Susie. Give me the money. You know, I thought so. It's such a tacky way to start off a nice evening. And can I tell you something? You should pardon the expression. We never once got stiffed. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I'm so glad this audience is enjoying our program. <laughs> Are we still on? Are you there, caller? Hi. Hi, Bill. I'm calling from Boston, and I, I'd just like to say that this woman comes off like the classy type, but she's no better than what we have on the streets up here. And just because they wear nice clothes doesn't mean a damn thing. Because I'll tell you something, underneath, they're prostitutes and hookers. They just give themselves different names. It's really sad that she has no morals. Would you care to chat with this young woman? I don't think we have anything to say to each other. <laughs> we don't res we, I don't think we respect each other's point of view. Uh, but you're certainly not surprised that there are people out there with that view. No, because when the pe most people think of prostitution, they have a knee-jerk reaction, and they immediately think the girls in the streets. That's right. all they ever see. Well, but I think this woman... You're married, I bet. Pardon me? I bet you're married. Yes, I am. Eight years. I have two beautiful children. And to tell you the truth, if women are going to screw around, why do it with multi-partners? I love my husband. I've been faithful. But the rate these women are going, they're just prostitutes and hookers. They're just as dirty as what we have up in Boston. Only you don't have this in Boston. Oh, yes, we do. Let me, uh, you're a, you are, uh, you may be, I do not presume to speak for this woman, and I appreciate her call, and she sounds civil enough, and I... And it is also true that she speaks for lots of people. You're a threat to her, uh, the, the, the monogamy of her husband. Well, so maybe with an attitude like that, her husband has to go other places to be happy. Um, number eight, Brian. <laughs> During drinks, it's good manners to chat. You would have to tell your clients, or your uh, young ladies that. And number nine, it's not polite to take advantage of the young lady to demand more than was originally agreed on in terms of activities. How do we know what's agreed on and how much, you know, and how much specific uh, information do you oblige the customer to share with a woman in, 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 uh, who works for the escort service? In other words... Well, we do... You know, she, the young whereas, wherefore, he's going to sign a... Uh, no, affidavit. no, but, but when the young lady calls him... Uh, they will generally talk about the parameters of the call. For instance, he might be interested in fantasies. He might be interested in having her tie him up. She might not be interested in doing that, so she wouldn't go on the call. It wouldn't be fair of him not to mention it, and then once she got there, provide yeah. her with the ropes and say, okay, go ahead. You know, uh -huh. that's really not fair. So, uh-huh. So you had a bondage room where the girls were no, we, waiting we for... We didn't do that. No. We, I, I have a friend who had a business who, that did that sort of thing, and I sent... Her name was Honey, and I sent them all over to her. Oh, I see. So you did have, a, you, you knew which activities, which particular women in your employ would be consensual about. Right. Well, they were only allowed, straight sex and oral sex were the only two things they were allowed to do anyway. So anything over and above that, the gentleman would have to go somewhere else. <laughs> What's over and above that? <laughs> Are you calling? I mean, are you their caller? <laughs> See? Sure, enjoy your laugh. I'm out here with you. <laughs> Go ahead, caller. Oh, you didn't wait for me. Uh-huh, I would have waited for you. Well, Sydney Biddle Barrows is about to chat with uh, our studio audience. The subtitle of our book is titled, uh, is uh, Etiquette, Etiquette, <laughs> Etiquette for Consenting Adults. I can hardly wait uh, to hear what this audience wants to uh, inquire of you, and we'll be back in just a moment. Tastes too good. Tastes too good to be, but it's not. Tastes too good to be, you know. Tastes too good to be, you know what? I don't believe it. Tastes too good to be, but it's true. Tastes too good to be good for you. Nah. Much too good to be. Mm -mm. Leave it to Lewis, which to be. No way. Way too good to be, so fat free. Lewis Rich Oven Roasted Turkey Breast. Tastes too good to be, 97% fat free. Tastes too good. You can't always see it, but it's there. Residue from food, detergent, minerals, clinging to everything your dishwasher washed. Detergent alone can't get it off. 
you also need Jet Dry, a rinse agent, to shower it off in the final rinse and keep it from sticking to your dishes. So if you're serious about cleaning, use Jet Dry. It rinses off what detergents leave behind. Arby's presents Chicken Cordon Bleu. Arby's Chicken Cordon Bleu, a masterpiece, a triumph, a magnificent sandwich. Arby's delicious tender breast of chicken filet, topped with savory ham and melted Swiss cheese, starring together on a toasted poppy seed roll. Arby's Chicken Cordon Bleu Sandwich, a performance for the taste bud, appearing only at Arby's. A possible connection between Scott McAllister and Kitty Porn from Oregon. Good afternoon, I'm Bob Evans. Coming up on KUTV News at 5, we'll show you documents that may link the former Utah corrections official to the porno tapes. Also at 5, we'll find out what fetal alcohol syndrome is and how bad it is in Utah. Then at 6, the elderly and handicapped declare a fiscal emergency in Utah's human services programs, and Carl Malone takes us on tour of his house. Join us, KUTV News at 5 and 6. Alrighty, uh, my first question is, how old are these people that, the girls, on, you know, average? Young ladies, anywhere from 19, anything below 19 is illegal, up to 30. What kind of future do they have if they're, I mean, if this is their job, okay, they're going to get old and, you know, they're not going to be able to do this anymore. What, I mean, what kind of basis for, like, the rest of, of their life most of the young ladies, nobody who worked for me worked because this is the only thing that they could do. I would say that 90% of the girls who worked for me were going to school. And they were I mean, using do, this money to pay their tuition. But do you think you're doing them a favor by, like, putting them, giving, like, a, them an immoral job? I mean, what's... I didn't give them an immoral job. They came and applied for it, and they were lucky enough to get it with me. What, what do they do afterwards, after they They, after they graduate can't... from school, and they go into society as, as productive members of society. I'd like to know, how long did you work by yourself before you started to recruit others to work for you? I, I, I started out answering the phones for another escort service for a gentleman named Eddie, and he had no idea how to run a business, and I, my girlfriend and I realized we could do it better, so we did. Did you ever? Yeah, he, you know what he wants to know. Did you ever do this work? No. You did not. Then how does she know about what? <laughs> I well, mean, how, how do you know, you know what the, to tell the ladies what they're going to go through? How can you actually first, talk to people about When we it? first opened up, the little mini training program I was telling you about lasted about 15 minutes because neither my girlfriend nor I, as, as I said before, had ever gone out on a call ourselves. But as the young ladies would come back to the office and would tell us all these different things that had happened, we realized, my God, that might happen again. We should incorporate this and tell the next group that comes along so they'll know what to do. And by the time we'd been in business for five and a half years, the training program was over four hours. There was so much to tell them yeah just got longer and longer as the years went by um i just think that it's attitudes like yours that make society very cold and harsh you take the private act of sex and you make it into a commodity that people can buy and sell and you're almost proud of it and it just it's, 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 i don't understand it's the world's oldest profession i don't think what you did is wrong at all I, <laughs> I think you're just as cheap as all the rats that work for you. They weren't cheap. <laughs> well, aren't we being... I'm just wondering if you screen your girls for AIDS, et cetera, and if they're periodic checking for that. You have to remember that we shut down back in 1984, and they hadn't even started testing the blood supply yet. They didn't start doing that until the summer of 85. AIDS was something that I kind of sort of heard about because I have so many gay friends who were getting sick, but it wasn't anything that we really had to worry about at the time, very fortunately. And Are I'm you there, caller? Hi. Yes, I was wondering if any of the girls that worked for Sydney uh, developed a relationship with the clients other than just a working relationship, and if so, did you like that, or was that allowed? You know, a lot of girls think that, wow, here's an opportunity for, Pete, for, for a lot of girls to meet these really wealthy, fabulous, terrific guys. And what, it was exactly the opposite is what happened. The men used to fall in love with the women on a regular basis. Here was Miss Perfect. She was always there for him. She never had opinions practically on anything of her own. She was sexually willing to do, you know, just about anything. He thought she was perfect, not realizing she was there doing a job. And I had many girls come back to me and said, you know, I just can't go see Mark anymore. He really wants a girlfriend, and I'm not willing to do that. Sydney, uh, a customer may sound perfect on the phone, and when the girl gets there, he right. does strange things and beats her up. What happens then? Yeah. How can you prevent that? 
Okay, what you have to realize and remember is that there are, I don't know where men get such a bad rap, there are not millions of men out there looking to go and beat women up. Maybe there are a lot of husbands out there that go out and beat women up, but they don't go out and beat other people's women up. And for men who are looking for that kind of specific thing, they will call a specific place to get it. You're not going to call an escort service who knows your name, who has your credit card number, who knows what hotel you're staying in. You're going to go out and find some girl from the street and go and do something bad to her because no one knows who she is, cares where she is. And those the people you're going to go after, not an escort service girl. In my opinion, I think the audience is being really too harsh on you. I, I think that you're a very good businesswoman, and I also think if there were more people, I mean, prostitution is not going to go away. It's just going to be here forever. And I think if there were more people out there like you, we'd be reading less in the newspaper about call girls or prostitutes getting murdered and, and everything else that happens to them every day. It's true. Uh, are you there, caller? Hi. Hello? Go ahead. Hi, Sydney? Yeah. Phil, this, my name is Linda, and I'm from Massachusetts, and I didn't want to give Massachusetts a bad name. I wanted you to get back in the business. I think you're doing a great job, and the woman that called from Boston, we're not all that crazy up here. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Uh, from your book, um, uh, you've got a chapter here titled Bathroom. Oh, yes, because, you know, even though the bathroom is a private room, a lot of times it becomes a public room when a lot of different people go in there. And isn't it just dreadful when they use all of your best perfume and they stick a big finger in your expensive night cream to put on their hands? I hate Or that. they go snooping in your medicine cabinet? Yes. There's all kinds of bathroom this etiquette. This is about etiquette. Uh, etiquette. <laughs> uh, other things, uh, is it, 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 and it is, is it proper, you, you ask the question, is it proper for the lady to present the man with a condom? I don't know, presenting him with it, I think that if he hasn't got one of his own, she sure as hell better have one of her own to use. But I don't know if she sort of wants to, you know, present it quite like that. I think you need to discuss it first. Uh-huh. Before you need to use it, by the way. You know, you don't want to bring it up. Can you say, smart. I love you during sex, even if you don't mean it literally? No. That's not right. That's not fair. And if someone does, you can't necessarily hold them to it afterwards. And if someone says it to you, what do you say? Must you say it back? Absolutely not. Not unless you mean it. Mm-hmm. Uh, how to throw an S&M party? Oh, that's a great chapter. I don't know if we can go... I don't know if we can go into it here on television, but that's a, that's a real fun chapter. Well, how do you decide who do you invite to this? Well, uh, you, you invite your pals who are into that sort of thing. You invite the, the mistresses or the masters and their slaves, and uh, you have a party. And uh, there's, a, there's a great deal of etiquette with respect to that particular sort of field. Is there a proper way to ask the partner to do X or Y or even what the hell Z? <laughs> and is there an equally proper way to decline? Like Nancy Reagan said, you just say no. Well, then you might want to do it a little nicer than that. You might want to distract him by do, or her by doing something to them that you know they really like in order to get their mind off whatever it was that they want you to do that you don't want to do. You also suggest that it should be an I message. You shouldn't. In other words, you yes, should say you, I. In other words, I'm don't not. Be Instead accusative. of you pervert, you want to say, you know, I just don't think I'd be comfortable with that. Don't, don't, don't make it an accusation. Right, right. Are you there? Call her high. Oh, I got to push the button. Sorry. Are you there? Go ahead. Hi, I'm from Auburn, Mass. Yes. I'm wondering, um, what the, what's the difference between dressing up and having more money and having better credentials than, than standing on the street and, you know, waiting? Well, first of all, it's much safer, it's much warmer, uh, it's more lucrative, and it's more fun. I think it's ridiculous just because you have money and you dress better and you ask politely. Well, that's okay. You're entitled to your opinion. Mm-hmm. That question came from Massachusetts. What's happening to Massachusetts? Yeah. What's the matter? I think it's safer what she's doing than when you hear this date rape, that yeah. she's more organized. I'm, I live, live and let live. I'm not saying that she's right. I'm not saying that she's wrong. But to me, they're safer than people going out single on dates. You At least know we know where the young lady around. is. We, she has to check in with us every hour. Uh, really? Absolutely. So you keep a close monitor on all the sure young do. ladies who are working sure the do. evening. Yeah. And if for any reason, let's say, the, let's say she's been with the gentleman for three or four hours, and all of a sudden she decides she doesn't want to be with him anymore, she is more than free to walk out and leave, and we will pay her for the entire time that she's been there. And we'll be back in just a moment.
this is the whole idea behind this. New Robitussin DM Cough Relief in single doses. Now you can take it with you. Most nighttime cold medicines have 25% alcohol. But you can get relief without the alcohol with new Robitussin Night Relief in cherry flavor for children and adults. All the relief without the alcohol. This is Sizzler's All-You-Can-Eat Salad Bar. This is the build-your-own Tostada Bar we added to Sizzler's Salad Bar. And this is the hot pasta bar we added to the build-your-own Tostada Bar that we added to Sizzler's Salad Bar. Now what more could we possibly do to improve a piece like this? Add dinner. Presenting Sizzler's Malibu Chicken and Salad Bar Dinner. Tasty chicken topped with ham and cheese that comes with all the above for the price below. Sizzler. Hear the pretty songbird wonder how he heard. Somebody must have told him the news. Mama keeps everything clean, bright and dandy. Mama's got the magic. Mama's got the magic of Clorox too. He led the ultimate life of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. But there was one more love that totally consumed Elvis Presley. Now, Entertainment Tonight puts you in the driver's seat to see why the king went crazy for all kinds of cars. He owned probably in excess of 300 cars. If he saw one he liked, he just bought it. It didn't matter what it was. Take a drive down memory lane with the hard bodies Elvis loved best. You'll get the inside story only on the next Entertainment Tonight. Tonight at 6.30, only on KUTV2, together. Lassie! She's the best friend a kid could have. You can do it, Lassie! There's new adventures with a family bound together by the love of a special friend. Come on, Lassie, I'll race it home. Lassie. Saturdays at 6.30. To be part of the audience, write Donahue Tickets, care of NBC, New York, New York, 10112. Sydney, if this, is, if this was your business and you promote it, then why didn't you ever go out and do it? I didn't feel like it. But why? <laughs> because it wasn't right for me. For instance, let's say for the sake of argument, I don't eat meat. Does that mean that no one who ever comes to my house can have a steak? Well, you know, I mean, if you do, if you yourself believe in what you're telling other people to do... I'm not telling I, them to do it. They, 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 they are going to do it anyway. I'm giving them an opportunity to do it with some decency. All right. <laughs> how did you go about getting the girls? How did you? We did what every other business does you? that's looking for help. We put an ad in Help Wanted at a uh, oh. section of the newspaper. Yeah. Now I have for you the basic etiquette for the arranged date. Pay attention. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be behind. Number one, Brian. See the. Start with Sunday brunch. Important, right? Yes. This from your book, uh, Mayflower Etiquette. This is etiquette. if we're, uh, you're getting a date through a dating service, which a lot of people are doing these days, also from personal ads. And it's much better to, for instance, a lot of people are uncomfortable having a dinner with somebody. Lunch is often very impossible. So Sunday is a good time. You know, you can make excuses to get away if you need to. And, of course, you meet the person at the restaurant. You don't have them come pick you up. They might be some kind of nut. Right. Let's just go through these quickly. Two, meet at the venue. In other words, don't meet at your place or his. Go to the restaurant. The man who choose, uh, the man may choose the place but should not be pushy about it. The lady should offer to split the cost of the meal, but the man should be prepared to pick up the tab. She should not order the most expensive thing on the menu unless he does. If your meeting has been arranged by a dating service, do not discuss the service or the other dates it's arranged for you. If all seems to be going swimmingly, it is a perfectly appropriate for her to ask him to an event in the near future. He should, if they live in the city and it's necessary, put her in a cab. He need not pay her fare. Afterwards, call the service and report how it went. If it doesn't work out, use the service as a buffer. If it continues to work out well, let the proprietors of the service know. And finally, play fair with the service. Are you there, caller? This is what you got to know. This is America. As we move into the 21st century, if you don't know this... Who said forget it? Huh? You said, yeah. what is the world coming to? Terrible, terrible. Can you imagine? I never heard of man is given out for such things, you know? I don't either. Right. No, we no, have no. to but follow them? What? We don't have to follow well, them. Well, you don't have to follow Emily Post, either. Yeah. 
I don't feel you should glamorize something like this because my daughter is now a child. Glamorize what you are doing. My daughter is now a child. In 10 years to 11 years, she will be ready to go out in the world and find a job. And if this looks good to her, I'm scared for her. This is not something that should even look good. It should be left on the street. It should be left on the street so that it will be one day just completely criminalized and everybody's in jail, including your girls, as well as the I jobs. think you've got to remember that I've not been in business since 1984. I'm, I, it's those of you who don't know that, let me just bring that up. Yeah, I think that comes from the home, whether that would be a, attractive to you or not. So, and, and I think that what you did is okay. <laughs> Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Hi. I'm wondering if there's any morals or prides to the women who do this, if they have any. Sure they do. Why wouldn't they? Everyone wants to do a job well. <laughs> what percentage do you keep? Excuse me? What percentage do you keep? What do did the girls get? To did I work? keep? I kept 40, the girls got 16. Of course, any tips they got belonged to them. Are you there? Hi, I'm glad you waited. Yes. Bill? Yeah. I'm from Flint, Michigan. And I just want to say that I have more respect for women that get paid for their services than those that just go out and give it away. Thank you, Flint. Are you there? I'm glad you waited, caller. Go ahead. Yes, Phil. I'm calling from Boston, another one from Massachusetts. Um, I'm calling to say that uh, I'm all for this service. I feel that it's very respectable. Sydney's very, very good with what she's done. She's run a fine business. I feel much more comfortable going to someone in her business rather than going to someone who's a prostitute or hooker on the street who you don't know who they've been with that night. But there are people in this audience that want to know why you're going to someone in the first place. Well, maybe I'd like a one-night stand. Thank you. Thank you, audience. Because I'm sorry, what? They don't have anyone at home to go to. Well, a lot of them do, though. Yeah, a lot of them do, but the, the lady may not be giving them what they want. Uh -huh. A nice, calm, intelligent dinner. Yeah. And she's wearing the nightie from seven years ago at home still. Then that's her fault. Are you there? I'm glad she was on her plan. Yeah. Not... Are you there, caller? Hi. Are you there, caller? Phil. Yeah. Oh, I still got the guy. All right. Well, thank you, Boston. Uh, we're glad you called. I got a break, obviously. Uh, we'll be back with Sidney Biddle Barrows in just a moment. Meatloaf tonight? Put an alarm clock in your pantry. Then you won't forget the Lipton recipe soup mix. With its special blend of seasonings and toasted onions, your meatloaf will wake them up. Add Lipton recipe soup mix. It's too good to forget. The other day, my baby Emily patted my cheeks and said, Nye, nye. That means nice. Dove contains one quarter moisturizing cream. It won't dry your face like soap. With Dove, my face feels softer than before. Emily is very perceptive. <laughs> you can find big savings on your grocery bill every day when you know the score. We're celebrating our 50th anniversary with great savings on your favorite brands. Loose Unwanted Pounds, quickly with Ultra Slim Fast Powder. Choice of flavors, just six fifty a can. Nothing beats the sweet, juicy goodness of sun-kissed oranges. Two pounds are just 50 cents. For a quick, hot breakfast, pick up Downy Flake Waffles. Assorted varieties are $1.50 each. And no celebration is complete without cake. Western Family Cake Mix is at the unheard of price of 50 cents each. Shop the savings today at Food Town, Bestway, Thriftway, Weinegers, and Macy's. Second grade didn't start out so great. My best friend transferred to another school, and I missed the bus. Now, I don't know for certain what made me feel better. It could have been my mom, or it could have been the Ovaltine. Looking back, it was probably a little of each. Ovaltine, still as good as she remembered. If you shower with soap, this is what you're missing. Successfully clean. Never before. Never with soap. Successfully clean. You're not fully clean unless you're successfully clean. Soap leaves a sticky film behind, but zest rinses clean away. Zest deodorant lather lathers you clean, then rinses you cleaner. With zest, you feel cleaner because you are cleaner. Successfully, successfully, successfully clean. Women in Utah. Different faces, 
different voices, different expressions of life. A lot has changed during the last decades, but where do Utah women stand today as workers, as wives, as women alone? Sunday, Deborah Lindner begins a look at the status of women in Utah, only on KUTV News at 10. point that I want to make is brief, but it is that what you did was still illegal. And you're justifying something that was illegal. Whether it should have been or not, it was illegal, and you're justifying how you got well, how around it. How do you feel it. about it being illegal?